there, Wanderers. Welcome. I hope everyone's having a merry Yuletide. Now, today, we're going to start a multi-part adventure where we go and dig up some smoky quartz crystals right here in the upstate. Now, a lot goes into this process, and so it's going to take us a few weeks. But it's going to be a wonderful adventure where we start with digging, we'll go over a little rock hounding tips and tricks, then we'll see how to clean some crystals, and when we're done with that, we'll cut some down, grind them, polish them up real good, and have some wonderful pleat pieces to display. Now, it's a bit of a long journey, so I don't want to dally, but uh, won't you come and wander with us on our journey to Diamond Hill? Come on. So I'm out here at Diamond Hill Mine in Abbeville, South Carolina. Uh, I live only about 15 minutes down the road. I love it. It's definitely my favorite local mine. When I'm not digging up in my backyard, I'm digging up here. And I'm on the back of this ridge, um, not really in a secret spot, because you can come here and pay $20 and dig as much as you want and take home whatever you can take. Uh, so, but most people dig on the other side of the quarry, down in a big hole. And I've kind of, I found this spot. I actually found this rock um, one time. I was just coming back down here. Honestly, I don't know what for. I just saw a little trail in the woods. And I was like, oh, I dig in the woods. Let me go walk back here. And literally on this spot right here, I found this rock. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to dig there. And all of the, it's some really interesting smoky quartz here. Um, Diamond Hill Mine is a quartz mine with a few other things, but it's mostly quartz. And so, long story short, this is my favorite pocket. I've been excavating it a little bit. It doesn't really seem like anyone else has dug from it, which I kind of like. Um, just because I get to sort of explore and every time I come back and visit I get to dig a little deeper. and I'm, I don't, It doesn't really look like I'm missing anything. So, we're going to really focus on digging some more stuff out of these today. Um, this is an example of some of the rock that I have dug from this pocket. Um, as you can see, it's some nice smoky. Um, in the next few weeks, we'll be cleaning, grinding, and polishing uh, some of these so you can see what they look like as a finished product. Um, so first, let me get the leaves cleared out of these holes where I've been digging. And then I'll go over my little bucket of tools everything I brought and we'll uh, dig some rocks. So we've cleared most of the leaves away. We're gonna start digging. It rained all yesterday so it is going to be a muddy mess but ground is softer. It's better to go digging right after a rain. Literally I've already got rocks in there that were just sitting under the leaves because the rain had washed the soil away. And I mean you can see and we'll get a better look but like there are rocks just sitting on the top of the ground. Uh, ready for you to harvest. Now obviously I got my coke bottle uh, trays. The the soft drink trays are really nice um, for rock collecting honestly because when you get to the cleaning phase which we'll get to in a bit you can just drop them all down in the water. Um, I use these trays to sort by size. Now when I'm pulling things out uh, of the ground I kind of just fill them up and then I sort of take them home power wash them off, organize them by size a little, and then clean them, and then reorganize them. So I use the trays a lot. They're really nice. Also, I don't dig with a lot of stuff, honestly. I dig mostly with my hands and a knife, uh, a dull knife. Um, but you know, I keep a chisel. Well, for one, I keep this little toolbox because it's nice if you find some little points and you don't want them in your trays, you can put them right in the bag. I've actually got some from my last dig still in a pocket. Um, but really, I recommend a trowel and some sharp object 
moderately sharp object, something that you can stick in a sort of lever, get under a big rock. Um, we'll definitely show you how to use these, but really I do a lot of stabbing the ground and moving the dirt away. But I'm excited about what we got here today. Um, I think I'm going to try to work on digging this space out because there is a big rock right here. So I'm going to try and I've been digging some up here and I was digging some down there last time I was here. So I'm going to try and carve away most of this space and sort of just keep opening this hole up. So let's get a little closer view and see what's down here. Now, as you can hopefully see, um, there's rocks everywhere. And not every pocket is like this. We'll, we'll do definitely some more digging videos. Um, and find some different pockets. Things look different. Every mine is different. But literally, I'm moving these leaves and look at all of these little rocks just laying on the ground right here. Um, this is a really nice, bountiful pocket. See? Even larger. And that's got a nice dark color. That's the one thing I've noticed. I'm probably, I'm honestly not that far down in the ground, uh, a foot, maybe a foot and a half in some places. And the color's getting a lot darker. So that's really why I'm back out here to really get some stones. I've been digging in this spot off and on for about a year, maybe a little over. And I've just been kind of saving the rocks because I haven't had the stuff to do anything with them. But now that I got some tools in and can start shaping and grinding my own stones, uh, it's really nice. So I wanted to come back to this pocket because I got some expos in February and get a few more nice stones and see what I can make out of them before I go and hopefully try to sell them. So let's start here. So I think this is probably gonna be easy and this might be a kind of larger rock. Now, I've gathered a few larger rocks. I know from some of the cutting that I've already done that having some big rocks is nice because you can really shape them into what you want. Um, and not without worrying about, you know, cutting away too much or, you know, cutting away the integrity of the stone. So, I used to not get a bunch of big rocks, but since this is sort of my first time uh, digging since I got some cutting tools, I am going to probably get a few more than I normally would so that I can have some larger rocks to experiment with. Um, and like I said, a good thing to note, I mean, I'm digging up little rocks, um, as I'm clearing out around, you know, you want to check, check your dirt. Um, the biggest tip I like to give to beginning rock hounders and diggers is even if you don't think it's a great stone or you don't know, if there's doubt, put it in your bucket, wash it, figure it out later. Like it's much better to have another rock to throw in your garden at home than, you know, leave a rock that might be really nice, but you can't necessarily tell because it's covered in mud and clay. Um, so, you know, unless you just run out of space. I, I try to dig until I run out of space, honestly. Um, I'm searching through some of these, but let's, uh, let's, let's try to focus on this and get this out. So, it does look like it's a large rock. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily anything. Um, it means it might just be a good candidate to cut up, but, but it could also have some crystal formations on the other side. Um, I find, at least here, but in a lot of rock formations, uh, if you find a big rock like this, oops, um, It's more likely to have crystals on the underside because that's where the water drains out and how those crystals form. Well, see, that's another good size. That's really why I love this pocket. Um, honestly, this is probably one of the more bountiful spots I dig in at this mine um, for reasons like that. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. It does have some crystallization. It's not like super great. Well, actually there's a nice little point. Um, so that's really cool. Now, obviously this will clean up a lot better 
Um, let me make sure it's on film. Yeah, right center. I am a good photographer. Now this will clean up a lot better. Um, and that'll be an interesting process to see. You know, I've gotten better stuff, but honestly, I've been here for digging for like 10 minutes. This was already on the surface, but this is a cool, this will be a cool rock. And depending on what this looks like, that might be able to be cut down and made into some interesting shapes. So we'll see. All right, I'm going to dig out some more of this and uh, come back to you maybe when I find another big one or when I find something interesting. So dug a little bit out, honestly, haven't dug too much out because uh, it's been pretty good going um as you can see it's not quite smoky but that's a nice piece it's already got a pretty well defined edge um you know that'll clean up nice into a little piece uh this pocket is just super abundant which is nice god and it's got some very dark pieces it's going to clean up so good especially once we get it polished um now we just dug out that large one up here. Looks like there's another pretty good size rock here. So I wanted to dig it out on film. Oh, it looks like it's pretty loose. Well, I was gonna dig around more, but let's just pull this up and see what it looks like. Um, now, you, you don't have to be rough. Uh, and again, this is why it, it really helps to go dig in after it's been raining. Um, and if you're digging in the soft clay, um, it's real easy to get stuff out. But uh, let's look at this, buddy. I always, always go through. Oh, that's my phone. I always go through the rock, the mud clods that I pull out. Oh, guys, this, holy. Guys, this is this is what I came here for. And honestly, I kind of had a feeling that this was sitting under here. Um, we can get into it later, but I was... Uh, I have been this week doing some manifestation ritual work. Um, focusing on this pocket. And I have been imagining a nice... God, I would estimate this is probably a 7-8 pound. That might be a little high. I know it's more than 5 pounds because I got a 5 pounder at home. Um, God, and it's almost the shape that I've been imagining it too. Uh, really interesting, honestly. Um, not surprising, but, uh, look at the color on that. God, with, this is, this is a really nice hunk of smoky. And as you can see, I mean, like, look, this is, this is wow. This is why I came out here today. Um, my goodness, let's see if we can find some more of these. This is going to make an amazing several amazing pieces look at that now I've only been digging about an hour and honestly already I have a pretty incredible haul and that's kind of unusual now I like this pocket I keep coming back because it seems like every time I dig in it it gets better today has certainly proven that and let's look at a few of what we've got um, obviously we'll see these a little cleaned up towards the end but this is just some really nice dark smoky um, and I've got quite a few good sized chunks of it. Um, as we'll see over the next few weeks, uh, this is good. Oh, it's got nice flat bits. There's gonna be some, some webbing in there. These aren't like perfectly formed smoky crystals. Uh, these are more, um, you know, deposits that filled up in caverns, you know, over time, uh, a little bit under the, not like a giant cavern, but when pockets in the ground would open up, water would drip, a layer would get added here or there. So your purity is not the same throughout, but um, as you'll see in some of our final pieces, I think it makes for some really interesting uh, sort of like mosaic type stuff. And in a lot of pieces in this pocket, um, you can't see it here. You won't really be able to tell different from dirt, uh, but there's, there's iron inclusions in the crystal too. So it gives these nice moments of you know some some darker background with some oranges on top um, and some spider webbing um but yeah i'm just really happy you know in addition to the two big stones we got you know that one where one of the faces will probably be pretty nice and then God, that like eight pound chunk of smoky i am so excited about and lots of little you know look to be uh five six seven eight nine ounces 
Uh, some of these bigger ones mm, approaching about a pound on a few pieces. Um, so here's one you can see. Um, this is a bit of a lighter piece, um, and you can see a little bit of that spidering. But even you know this, I think it's a little darker through there. So you know who knows what we'll end up doing with this piece, but we might cut it in half, make two smaller ones with it, um, and reveal some of that color on the inside. But um, Again, these are good. Not really digging up points in this pocket. We'll get to. We'll definitely be back here and make some more videos for this. But we are digging up pieces that are really good for carving down and making your geometric shapes or your irregular shapes. Um, so doing some some really nice carving on these rather than like finding crystal points. But um, that's what I love about rocks. Every little location is different. The crystals that grow there. Are, are really unique and, and um, specific to those locations. The more you do this and the more you start recognizing different rocks, you can actually start to tell like which continents things come from or what mines. And it may be a little bit, we're at some of the wholesale shows, so we know, and I mean, I speak to the owners of mines in Peru and Madagascar and uh, Brazil, and you know, I meet them uh, on a semi-regular basis. So you get to learn the the specific crystals that each mine produces, and it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll definitely we got a wholesale show coming up soon, so we'll do a little behind the scenes on that as well. But um, honestly, I'm I'm really excited with with this today because I didn't have a lot of time to come out here. I was like, look, I'm just gonna give it a good four hours in the afternoon, and I'm one hour in, and I'm thinking, hell, I might be able to back up about three hours. So like I said, I'm gonna keep digging. If I find anything else, uh, I'll. Especially if I find another big one, I like doing those reveals, digging them out on camera. Um, so we'll see. But uh, otherwise, I'll catch y'all back when we get to ready to clean these up. We're almost done for the day. I just wanted to get a little bit of a better close up view of digging out some of these bits. Um, I just say, you know, some people might ask, well, how do you know where to dig? And honestly, if you're in a quarry, you just got to kind of learn, and you just got to dig a lot. I've had a lot of luck in this pocket. Um, just pulling out rocks. Oh, look at this. That's going to be a great smoky. Um, and this pocket's really crowded. I have I've dug out probably a half a foot, eight inch hole um, here, and pulled out... Uh, I don't even know. I would have to guess. Okay, literally, I'm about to dig out a lot of rocks here. One, two, three, four. I'm literally, I'm just trying to dig this rock down here. And so this is really, uh, here's another one. Ooh. Look, here's some. Oh, look. I cut the camera back on and found another big one for the day. Now, head button. Well, let's see what's let's see what's going on with it. Um, but what I was saying is, don't expect to go out and find this many rocks, especially not as many as I'm pulling out right now. Um, but you just got to kind of learn your spot. I I've, I've dug out here at this mine quite a bit, and. Is that in this specific spot over the last year I've probably spent 10 to 12 hours maybe 15 hours digging in this spot and it hasn't been as productive as it has been today it's always been good though um but you just gotta kind of pick a spot and keep at it and yeah I don't know I mean that's that's kind of the advice you you learn more the more you dig the better you get at recognizing spots but sometimes you just stumble onto a pocket that's pretty good and you just dig and see what's there um, I'm sure you know if anyone has any techniques or anything to add be feel free to in the comments um, but yeah I just wanted to say this is this is just a really an exceptional pocket that I have seemed to found here Exceptionally good. 
Um, but I want to say, yeah, you know, I've dug up probably three trays today and those giant hunks and whatever giants we're about to pull out. And uh, in about three hours, probably a hole that's two feet square, a half a foot, eight inches deep. And I've had a really, I've had a lot of luck, but um, you just gotta keep digging and you know, each time's an adventure and you'll see what you get that time. Okay, dear Lord, there's a lot of rocks here. All right, we've made a little progress. Let's try to pull these out before the battery goes. And it looks like they're closing up early today, so once I get these out, these will probably be my last ones. Because I've got an exceptional haul this time. God, some good coloration there. And let's check this one out. There we go. That's some good shapes there. That's some clay. We'll have to see what that one looks like to be. Um, another good rock. Yeah, wow guys, I am honestly super impressed. I didn't expect to find this many rocks today. I guess uh, Diamond Hill was excited about being on film. So, let's get all these ready, packed up, back home, and ready to be cleaned. So we're home and at the rock cleaning station, and let me just say, today's haul was really amazing. I'm glad that it ended up being the one that I filmed for y'all because I got three trayfuls of rocks, you know, anywhere from this size um, even up to some nice fistfuls. We've got several larger rocks. This is one that I already had, but it needs to go in this batch. I thought it had actually already been cleaned and cataloged, but it had not. Um, so anyway, you know, and again, our big pieces that are nice. Um, the next step after you get them home is usually to either pressure wash them or I, I use a hose attachment um, just to jet them off. Get some of that mud and clay off of them so that you can get them ready for dropping them in the iron bath, which will be the next step. Real easy. Or I guess the anti-iron bath. To get all of the sediment and uh, manganese and iron deposits off of them, which honestly is not a big issue with these smokies that we've been digging it's still good to do it but um other rocks that we'll go through in the future they really need the bath more you can tell the the clearer and purer wider the crystal is you'll have iron deposits that make them red and um or not make them red they appear red on the outside so you want to clean those off but um it's just a good idea you know you always want to Put your crystals through an iron bath but i do like first to sort of do a pre-rinse again to get all the mud and dirt off and to sort of see what they look like um sometimes i'll take a, a little scrubby brush and scrub some bits off so i do we're going to do that with that that first big piece that we dug up that looks like it's got some crystallization and maybe some points on this edge i do think most of this rock is probably not going to be like the greatest rock but I've got stacks of them on the porch. I mean, who doesn't love a nice stack of white quartz rocks? Um, just around the garden or something. So let's uh, clean this up and get some water on this big one. Um, get a, a look at a few of them, and then we're going to drop all these buddies into the iron bath. All right, let's see if we can get some of this off. Now, it's definitely got points. Um, like I said, I've got some other... Well, we'll just we'll just see. I've got some others. You know, they they're decently impressive. They're they're decent. Um Again, you don't ever know what you got till you clean it. So, let's see what's underneath. Okay, well, definitely 
not what I was expecting. Um, it's not exactly points, but it's 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 cool. It's an interesting crystallized formation. Um, this is really cool. I think long term, what I'm probably gonna do with this is try and find a place and cut like a slab. Just cut this front part off as a slab. I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. Oh, it's a telemarketer. Thanks for ruining this take, but I'm probably gonna use this. So anyway. Um, yeah, this could be some interesting thing. We'll probably revisit this in a few weeks, uh, down the road. Um, let's keep getting some more off and see what this turns out to be. Yeah, so these are definitely not regular crystal tips, but this is going to be a pretty interesting piece, I think. Now, let's shift over for a second. And... This this piece will really need to be cleaned up um, in the water to see, but yeah, there's a lot of really nice smoky bits with some iron inclusions. This is going to be a really nice orange and black rock um, when we're done with it. Yeah, that's got some really nice dark color. So I'm really, really excited about this rock. This is definitely the star of the day. Like honestly, if this was the only rock I had found, it still would have been a good day. So I'm gonna finish washing some of these off and put them in some different things and get ready for the bath. These are our three standout pieces. Of course, this large skeletal quartz formation that we'll slice off. Again, we'll revisit that in a few weeks. This nice, it weighed in at 11 pounds, six ounces, smoke of chunky, which again is something we'll be putting off because I just, I'm not ready to cut into something like this yet. Um, obviously, we'll look at it cleaned up here soon. And this wonderful piece this is one of the last three that we the last three big ones that we dug out and it's got some really nice moments here um this is going to look really cool when it's cleaned up and it looks like a pretty good candidate again for slicing off and making a plate something easier to stand up um i'd love if it stood something like that so we'll revisit those but let's look at the most of the haul so i've done most of my pre-rinses on this batch and as you can see Again, we have an exceptionally large haul. Uh, now, some of the larger rocks had a larger percentage of uh, what became garden rocks, and we have a few more examples here of things that will probably be garden rocks, but not a bad worry at all, especially when you look at the great variety, not just in size, but coloration too. We've got some great shapes and some really great examples of some smoky this just super excited with everything that I was able to dig up in this dig so I was originally gonna walk us through the cleaning stage in this episode but we're getting a little bit uh, we're running out of time a little bit getting a little too long in the episode so we're gonna bump that to next week so we'll be back next week with cleaning and grading these I'm gonna separate them out sort of by color and go over a pretty simple cleaning process and then we'll also be joined next week by another one of the Wanderers and we'll have a bonus tutorial. So we'll have two tutorials next week. And then the following week we'll dive right back into this, get on with the cutting and grinding and polishing and get to finally see some finished products from some of these stones. So real excited about that. And once again, just want to wish everyone a happy Yule and hope you're doing your best to celebrate the holidays safely with your loved ones. And as always, keep wandering. <laughs>